Deputy Cork and Kennedy suggested there earlier on that there should be a minister dedicated to climate change and uh, I have a certain sympathy with that, but I think it's a bit more interesting because the first recommendation of the Special uh, Citizens, Assembly committee, Citizens Assembly on this issue was to recommend a new um, independent body with a broad range of functions and powers on climate change, and that was uh, to ensure as a matter of urgency that uh, the body would be resourced appropriately and operate in an open and transparent man manner, be given a broad range of new functions and powers in legislation to urgently address climate change. And why I read that out is because when this was um, before the uh, DPAR, I think it was Robert Watt, uh, responded in a, an extraordinarily passionate way in opposition to it. He was absolutely a thousand percent against the idea of an independent body overseeing uh, the implementation of climate change policy. And I, I th it struck me how deeply he felt about it. And uh, I wouldn't mind if you'd comment on that, uh, because I think that that is quite what is needed to ensure not just you, Minister, but next government and the next government do actually do what's required. And as we've been discussing, the challenge is enormous. The is, transition uh, is, is, the, is the big issue. Um, but I would argue that the events in France and indeed events in Australia are indicating to us that the question of a just transition isn't all it seems on paper. To say let's put a, a carbon tax on fuel and heating and all the rest of it doesn't actually cut the mustard, even if you have some kind of dividends that you give back to the poor. And France is a good example because it's not unlike here. Um, in Paris, in particular, the outskirts of Paris were where most of the uh, blockades and response to the issue took place. And what's happened is, if you read the stuff, the background to this, people have been pushed out of the city. They're living in satellite towns and cities elsewhere. And at the same time, public transport has been reduced. They're getting rid of 11,000 kilometres of railway track. I'm not proposing we do anything like that here. Obviously, it's a different scale of a country. But the resentment that not uh, very, very poor, but the average worker has towards the government by pushing them out of the cities, forcing them to use their cars and then say, no, you go pay for it. And at the same time, the uh, wealth tax in France was reduced. So just transition has to be that. It has to be just because if it's un unjust, then, as we've all argued here, communities, people, workers, like board and moan workers, etc., uh, won't buy into it. So I'd like to ask you why... Uh, you're opposing the bill that people before profit had put before uh, the dial, or is about to put before the dial, hopefully, which is uh, to stop the exploration of um, further fossil fuels at sea and basically stop issuing licences for further fossil, fossil fuel exploration at sea. And when we brought this up to the, um, the IPCC when they appeared before the committee, um, what the professor responded to when I asked her, did she think that that bill would make a difference or had a role to play in fighting climate change. Her answer was, we have to make every effort not to add additional CO2 and therefore going into oil exploration is not a solution. What the deputy says makes sense. It would make sense for Ireland to turn away from fossil fuel as a source. Any additional CO2 that will be admitted will contribute to the problem. And you and uh, the government are opposing that bill when it has received um, broad cross-party support. So that, that's one thing I'd like uh, to put to you. And the other is to, is to put the argument against a carbon tax on the average person, but instead for a carbon tax on the profits of the fossil fuel companies. Yesterday, an economist here at this committee told us that to put a, a, um, a carbon tax on the profits of fossil fuel companies would, would require an EU-wide response. In other words, corporation tax being agreed across Europe. But this government, this country, consistently uh, resists that sort of approach. And, you know, we, we aren't left with the time. I can hear you and I can hear you acknowledge that this is urgent, that there aren't many windows left, that we're all up the same creek without an oar. Um, and we, we, uh, we don't have the time. So can we get that right? Can we put the taxes on the industries instead of on the ordinary people and can we uh, get some support from your party for a very simple bill which says stop issuing any further licences to explore 
for fossil fuel. Minister. First of all, I do recognise that what um, one of the aspects of implementation of a carbon tax is to attempt to change behaviour. But you're sticking the cart before the horse if you do what they did in France, and that is to put uh, people in the position of having to spend a huge more money of their redu already reduced income on uh, getting to and from work when the public transport is not up to scratch. And only yesterday, the cost of a cash fare in Dublin went up again on the buses. You would pay three euro to go from Donnybrook up to Stillorgan Village, a couple of stops. Um, there has been an increase in uh, the cash cost of transport in Dublin since 2011 of 87%. <coughs> now, if our wages went up that uh, increase, that would be great. But we're pushing people off public transport into the private car, and in particular from the satellite towns. And we all know how the M50 looks like gridlock. Until we provide the alternative and retrofit homes, we have 25% fuel poverty in Ballyfermot. People already are making decisions uh, in the winter about whether they eat a hot meal or turn on their gas. And this will penalise them even further, even if you say you're going to give them back a bit. So it's not that I don't recognise it. I'm just saying you're putting the cart before the horse and you're, you're not given the alternative. But you're being completely contradictory when you don't answer the question of tax on corporations and the wealth that they make and how that is not being addressed by governments in this urgent situation. And we do need the funds to retrofit homes. We do need the funds to increase public transport. It could come from that sort of tax, Thank you, but politically it's not being addressed. Thank you, Deputy.